It's April, it's Esophageal Cancer Awareness Month. Why does this matter to you? I'm an esophageal cancer survivor. And, uh, and so is my grandmother. So, you know, we have a family history, although uh, my grandmother died of esophageal cancer in 1973 when I was a senior in college. And uh, I'm still here. So I think it's very important. Uh, you know, as we know, this is a silent killer. Most people don't find out about esophageal cancer until it's way too late. I was very lucky that I found out when I, my cancer was stage 3T. Um, but if my physician had done what the uh, book tells him to do, he would have given me Prilosec for 12 weeks. And everyone tells me that if I had not acted immediately, um, I would have had more dire outcomes. So I just feel as if it's very important for those of us that have been blessed enough to live through esophageal cancer that we do everything we can to make sure that people understand uh, what heartburn can mean, uh, what GERD can mean, uh, what family histories uh, of any kind of gastrointestinal uh, distress can mean, and uh, that people should listen to, them, to their bodies, uh, try to do everything they can to live healthfully, but, but also look for the warning signs. And when you see them, don't be afraid. Uh, don't be afraid of getting bad news, because every day that you delay getting bad news, the news gets worse. So it's important to act when you can and, uh, and build your advocacy team and be out there. So I think it's a, it's a great time, April's a great time of the year for us to remind people of their own responsibilities, but their opportunities too, to get themselves empowered and educated so that they know what the risks of esophageal cancer are and what the symptoms look and sound like. Do you really think that fear is a big factor that keeps people from getting screened? You know, I think cancer is one of those words that just strikes fear in everyone, uh, and I think for very good reasons. Uh, but the numbers are impressively better in 2014 than they were in 2004, than they were in 1994, and we're going to keep getting them better. That, that ability that we have in 2014 to say, uh, I'm a cancer survivor, increases every time someone is smart enough to, and wise enough and brave enough to go get a diagnosis. Because not getting the diagnosis doesn't change the outcome, doesn't change the fact that you have cancer. It just makes it more difficult for you to survive. So every time you hear that someone is putting off a mammogram or putting off uh, an endoscope or a colorectal exam or a chest x-ray, or some other kind of something that could give them a diagnosis. Do everything you can to support them and remind them that they're not going to survive until they start to fight. And you can't fight without a diagnosis. I said, don't be afraid of the diagnosis. Be afraid of the outcome. And if you don't absorb the diagnosis and you don't get yourself well diagnosed with a, with a very good team of, of professionals around you, they're gonna give you a, a map for treatment, uh, then you're never going to be able to put yourself on the road to survivorship. And that's where everybody wants to be. So what's your recommendation for people who may not themselves be at risk for this disease, but are concerned about other people being at risk? The people that I know that, that care about spreading the word about esophageal cancer uh, aren't necessarily people that they themselves have uh, a chance of, of getting it. Uh, but they know someone that who has had it. They know that the diagnosis came too late for any successful treatment. They know that um, there are other things about people's lifestyles that they start to pick up on. Yes. Friends that they know that have to get up in the middle of the night to take antacids to yeah. sleep. Heartburn is a symptom that you could be putting yourself on the road to having cancer. Because what heartburn is, is basically a fire alarm going off in your house. And I often tell people, you know, if you walked in your house and the fire alarm was on, would you walk over and take the batteries out? Would you ignore it? No, you'd go try to find out where the smoke is and do everything you can to put the fire out. For friends of mine that take antacids incessantly, I remind them they're just taking the batteries out of their smoke detector. They're ignoring symptoms. Now, there are people that legitimately take it and it is really meant to uh, take away discomfort, but 
they've already been checked out by their doctor, and they're being monitored by their doctor, and they're not in danger of esophageal cancer in the next, till the next appointment. But for people who have no idea what their symptoms really mean, for them to mask those symptoms and to ignore them is completely irresponsible. But I understand how people feel. Um, I understand that getting a diagnosis is, is very fearful and very concerning. But as I've told people, there's nothing worse than getting one that is too late to do anything about. As you get further away from the date of your diagnosis, do you find that your attitudes about the disease and about life have changed? After I uh, started to recover from eight, eight rounds of chemo and 25 rounds of, of radiation and a very big surgery, uh, I decided that I wasn't going to sweat the small stuff and that I was lucky enough to if I survived for a long time, I was only going to do things I wanted to do, and I was only going to do things that added value, and I was only going to do things that, you know, I really felt where I could make a difference. And, um, you know, I will be, it will be four years in July that I was diagnosed, uh, which is pretty hard to believe. And, um, you know, I, I think I'm well over 100% recovered. I, I don't have an esophagus. I don't, I don't lay down when I sleep. I don't, uh, I'm very careful about what I eat and when I eat, but other than that, which I consider trivial things, um, I have a lifestyle that approximates my pre-cancer lifestyle, except <clears throat> that I understand uh, how precious things are, and I understand that time is not infinite but finite, and I really try every day to make sure that the things that I do meet the test of, of adding value and making a difference. Um, the Esophageal Cancer Action Network and has made uh, a tremendous difference, uh, I think, around the country. Uh, it's a very small organization, uh, but I think that it is the kind of organization that deserves all of our support uh, because um, this is about empowerment and education. This is about getting people to act and advocate uh, this is about giving people really good information that they can use for themselves and for their friends and family. And this is about getting people stirred up uh, and making sure they understand that for, for so many people uh, that get a late diagnosis, there were times much earlier in the gestation of this cancer where it could have been stopped. There was a, there was a symptom. There was something that happened that was probably ignored. And that, you know, these, these smoke alarms in our bodies, these bells going off, uh, these hints that there's something awry, um, that people have got to be empowered to act and feel, uh, feel as if the, the better course is to get the answer than in time, than to wait and ignore the situation but eventually get the answer that no one wants to hear. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. So I, I really applaud Mindy and ECAN for all that they do. I'm so happy to work closely with her. I think it's important that, uh, that we take people that really want to make this kind of difference and do everything we can to support them.